Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another first impressions video for you all. It's going to be on the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus. I've been wanting to try this foundation for the longest time and I finally had the opportunity to actually pick it up. So yeah, I'm going to be trying it out for you today. Just for reference, I bought mine in the shade 20 and there is 30ml in this bottle, one fluid ounce, which is very, very standard for a foundation. I absolutely love the packaging. It's plastic and it just has a screw lid and then like a little like pourie outy guy which personally I do like because it would be very, very trouble friendly and you wouldn't be worried that if you dropped it on like your bathroom floor that it would completely smash. So super enjoying the packaging at the moment and yeah, I think it would be amazing for traveling. It's such a lightweight container. So just to talk about my skin for a quick minute, I do have redness on my cheeks. So as you can see here, I have a lot of redness. Then I do have some previous blemishes here which I would like the foundation to cover I hope and my skin type is more normal combination so I have normal on my cheeks and then I have an oily like t-zone a little bit so yeah let's just get started so I'm just gonna pour out a little bit I'm not too sure how much I'm supposed to use I'm not even too sure if this is going to match me but I'm just gonna start off with a tiny bit because we can always add more so I'm gonna use that much and it's super, super thick consistency. Like it's not running down my hand at all. So that's kind of cool. So I'm just going to apply it to one side of my face and then we'll see how we go. I'm not wearing any primer or anything like that. And I'm not going to set this with a setting powder just because it is a mattifying foundation. This might actually be a little bit too dark, but that's okay. Whatever. And it doesn't really have much of a fragrance to it. At least nothing that I can smell. I'm just going to be um, buffing that in with a flat top brush. It is blending in super, super easy, but I do think I need a lot more product than what I just used. <laughs> I can see that this foundation has evened out my skin tone a lot and it has reduced my redness significantly. And I do like how it still has the glow that my skin normally has. Like when I turn my face, it's not completely like matte, but we will give this foundation a little bit of time to set before I comment on that anymore. So, so far I'm quite impressed with the coverage. I think it would be nice for every day because um, it's not too full, but it's not too sheer either, at least for me. So I'm going to do the other side and then we might see how we can actually build this foundation if we can at all. So I'm just going to go in with another pea size ish amount, about that much. I'm just going to dot this over my face. And I have the shade number 20 and it is actually matching me quite nicely. I'm really liking how it's matching at the moment. Yeah, it blends in so, so nicely. Like, I can't even explain how nicely it's blending in. It's blending in so effortlessly. I really, really like it. And it's super light feeling on the skin too, which I really, really enjoy. So it's covering my under eye dark circles quite well, um, considering it is a foundation. Normally I use concealer, but during my first impressions, I do like to see if it can cover. Um, and it is doing quite a nice job. I would definitely want to go in again with a concealer, but I am quite happy with how much it has covered on its own. So on my first layer, it has covered up my redness quite nicely. As you can see, I don't have much redness that I can see at least. So I really, really like that, but it hasn't covered up my blemishes. So I am going to put on a little bit more just on my blemishes, and then I might try and just build it up just a tiny bit on my redness just to see if it actually does cover that. So it didn't cover this one as much as I would have liked. Like it's kind of just wiped away, but it did cover up that one quite well. So I think that if you did have blemishes or anything like that, you would need to go in with a second concealer. Um, well, a concealer to cover up the blemishes, but I am quite happy with how it's covering up like my redness and stuff like that, at least for an everyday wear. But considering this is a first impressions, I do want to see if it's buildable. So I am just going to build it up around my redness on my cheeks. So I'm just going to go in with about that much. I don't know if you can see that. About that much. I do think tapping motions, like just stippling motions like this, actually works quite well with this foundation. And it makes it actually blend in quite nicely. Okay, that was very, very buildable. I really like how that happened. Um, yeah, I really, really like it. It's quite buildable. Especially compared to this side, you can definitely notice a difference. Like I'm, I'm still happy with how much it's covered, but if I was going out, say, nighttime or something, I could definitely still use this foundation and just use a second layer, and I'll be quite happy. 
So I'm just going to apply the tiniest bit to this side just to obviously even out the sides. The only thing that I'm concerned about at the moment is that it doesn't have a pump so you don't really know how much you're using and if you have too much or too little and it's not like you can just put it back in the container but I'm sure that's something that you can just look past just use a little bit and just get more as needed um, but yeah so I'm super super happy with this foundation at the moment it doesn't have like a super matte finish which I do like I don't like being like flat matte that's it kind of thing I do like having some dimension to my skin which this foundation does offer so I am quite happy with that this is how the foundation looks with natural lighting I don't have any studio lighting on at the moment and I am quite happy with how it looks and when I turn my face you can still see my skin underneath like it's really really unique like it's covering up my imperfections so for example my redness and some of my dark spots um, from previous blemishes but I can still see my skin underneath from that first layer so I do think it's one of those nice foundations where you can just put a little bit more on where you need it so for example I put it on my redness and it doesn't look cakey or anything like that so yeah so far I'm super 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 impressed okay so it's currently 8 11 I'm just gonna go put on the rest of my makeup and then I'll be back okay everyone so I'm back for another update it's currently 10 06 so it's been on for about two hours now I did have to run off and do some errands so yeah but I did like how my makeup applied on top of this foundation um, the concealer applied nicely my bronzer applied nicely and I haven't set anything with powder besides underneath my eyes where I did conceal but that is all that I used in regards to powder as well as a little bit of bronzer on my cheeks and on my forehead so overall, I'm looking down here because there's a mirror, um, I can notice that my skin, it's not like flat matte. And I did notice that while applying it as well, it's not a flat matte. It's definitely a velvet finish as the box should suggest. I'm getting so tongue-tied. But yeah, um, I'm really quite liking it at the moment. I also really like how it looks in the viewfinder. It looks really, really perfected and just nice overall. Um, I did look up close in a mirror before and I did notice that it didn't sink into my pores and it didn't accentuate them but it didn't blur them either. Don't expect it to because it doesn't claim to. Um, so if you do have like pores and that is a concern for you I would suggest like Benefit Professional, Smashbox, Photo Finish, Primer, um, L'Oreal Blur Cream, something like that to just fill in the pores and just perfect your skin and just even out your skin texture. But yeah, so far I am quite happy with how the foundation looks. I can see my forehead is starting to look a little bit oily as well as my nose. So that is quite concerning considering it's only been two hours. But whatever, we'll continue to wear this foundation for the rest of the day and we'll see how we go. So I'll check back with you in a little bit. Also, I just wanted to quickly mention, I have mine in the shade 20. If you have the Makeup Forever HD foundation, I'm in the shade 117. So if that helps you when you're buying this foundation at all, then yeah. Okay guys, so I'm back for another update. It's currently 3.15 if you can see that on my phone. So let's just have a look and see how the foundation's holding up. Okay guys, so I'm back for another update. It's currently 3.17. So this foundation's been on for quite a while now considering I put it on in about 8-ish. So it's been on for a good few hours. But oh lordy, my T-zone is so ridiculously oily. Oh my god. Oh my goodness, it's so oily. <laughs> wow. Wow. And like, it's really weird. Like my cheeks, it's getting like tacky. Like sticky. It's really weird. It's like it's not set. But it was set before. Like it didn't have this texture. That's so weird. That's so weird. Like it's sticky. Even where I put the bronzer. Oh. Oh. I'm not too sure how I'm liking this but besides the texture hasn't really sunken into my laugh line and it hasn't really caked up anywhere that I can see it's just really really oily and sticky looking but yeah it hasn't accentuated my pores or anything like that so I do like that aspect of it but it does feel very very unset so I think I'm going to set my foundation um, because this is just so weird. I've never had this happen to me before. So I'm just going to set my face with my pressed powder because this is weird. Like it's, it was set and now it's not set anymore. And there's a car doing burnout inside my house. Weird. So I can notice that my bronzer is 
somewhat fading as well like it's not as intense as it was earlier today and I did use the Makeup Forever matte bronze bronzer whenever I can I do like to use the same brand um, of products when I'm doing my first impressions just because like a brand makes their products to work with other brands other products within that brand's line so it makes a lot of sense to like for example use a bronzer if I have that brand available so I did and it's not really lasting as well as it did with the Makeup Forever HD that looks and feels a million times better no joke I think this foundation actually needs to be set um, it just isn't one of those foundations that you can just get up and go um, yeah unless you're just using it for like an hour or two or something like that but yeah I do think it's a it's a foundation that needs to be set with a powder because it did get sticky it's really really weird like I don't like I don't have oily cheeks I have quite normal cheeks if anything and it's just really really weird how that became sticky like I would have understood my forehead but because my cheeks got sticky that's weird like I've never had that happen to me before ever so right now I am quite happy with how my foundation is sitting after I have touched up with a sheer press powder but yeah so I'll check back with you in a little bit okay guys so I'm back for my final update of the night it's currently what time is it 10 17 if you can see that on my phone so this foundation's been on for like 12 hours now I think and my nose does look shiny my forehead isn't shiny but my nose is definitely shiny and it has started to sink into my laugh lines around here it's lasted on my cheeks quite nicely but just on my nose it's just super super oily Forehead's not that bad, it's just starting to get a tiny bit oily after I did powder a little while ago. But yeah, I'm quite happy. Like, it hasn't really emphasized my pores. It's sunken into my life lines just a little bit, but what can you do? So yeah, so far I'm quite impressed with this foundation. I did need to set it like halfway through the day or whenever I set it, um, but I do think this is a foundation that needs to be set and it would be a foundation that does require touch-ups. But personally, I don't think I have any foundation that I don't need to touch up. Like, I think it is quite normal for me needing to touch up on foundation, um, on powder to like mattify my skin just a little bit. So on that aspect, I think it is quite nice. I, I think if you have oily skin, it might be a little bit harder to control than other foundations, but I do still think it is quite nice. And I personally would still recommend it. And I will definitely keep using this foundation. Depending on how I like it, like a few more times, I might even buy a darker shade for when I fake tan. If you guys have seen my foundations, like you'll be like, no, stop. But yeah, um, I really, really, really enjoy it so far. I'm quite impressed. It's probably not the best foundation that I own, but it is a very, very nice one based on first impressions. Considering I didn't prime my skin and I, at the start of the day, didn't even set the foundation, it is doing quite well. Um, the only thing that I would recommend is definitely set the powder, um, set the foundation when you apply it so it doesn't get all sticky like it did with me because that was weird. But yeah, overall, super, super happy and definitely would recommend it. And depending on how I like it, I might even pick up a dark one. So yeah, I think that's my overall opinions. I'm quite impressed with the foundation like the coverage, like how it lasted after I set it with a powder, like the finish, like the texture, doesn't feel like a mask on my skin, can't really ask for much more, and it matches quite nicely as well. So I'm very, very, very happy at this stage. So yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.